This is the Garmin Forerunner 245 Music. It's a GPS running smartwatch. But is it any good? I've been using this watch for over six months now, so I've got a fair idea of what I like about the watch and what I don't like about the watch. I bought the Garmin to replace the TicWatch E that I was using previously. If you want to check out a review of that, I will link it up here and down here. My goal has always been to have a device that I can use for running that doesn't require me to have my phone with me, which can track me via GPS and store my music. I've got the 245 music, so I'm gonna concentrate on that, but it does come in a non-music variant also. Most of the features are the same on both watches, except for the music integration. I mean, it makes sense. That's why it's called the music, right? But before we get to that, let's take a look at the specs. Battery life is quoted to be seven days in watch mode, up to 24 hours in GPS mode, and up to six hours in GPS and music mode. It's waterproof down to five atmospheres, which I don't really know what that means, but you can swim in it and you can swim pretty deep. So don't worry about getting it wet. The internal memory will allow you to store up to 500 songs. The glass on the face of the watch is Gorilla Glass 3 and is nice and tough. And the watch body itself is made from fiber reinforced polymer, basically plastic. But I can tell you, having worn mine every day for almost everything over the last six months, it hasn't got a scratch on it. The strap is made from silicon and is an industry standard 20 millimeter band, so you can change it for a bunch of ones that either Garmin sell or ones from third parties. It comes with quick release pins, so that is super simple. It has a 1.2 inch color transflective memory in pixel display. What that means is, as I understand it, it's similar to an e-ink display whereby the battery consumption of the display changing is pretty minimal, but you're not going to get the vibrancy of an OLED, for instance. It's 240 by 240 pixels. The display isn't going to compete with something from Apple or Samsung, but it is nice and clear to read and you can read it in direct sunlight. So that is a definite win. It's also backlit. The watch itself is nice and light. It's 38 and a half grams, so it's not too heavy on your wrist. And the watch is compatible with both iOS and Android. Although there are a few minor differences in how that works with each operating system. But we'll go through that in a minute. Let's talk about sensors. The 245 Music has an impressive array of sensors, including GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, a wrist heart rate monitor, a compass, an accelerometer and a pulse oxygen meter, as well as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Those are the main specs of the watch. There's a full list of specs on their website. I'll leave a link in the description below the like button if you want to check them out. But what sports can the watch actually track? The watch is capable of tracking all the main sports that you'd expect. Here's a bulk of the list. Obviously it tracks running, including outdoor, treadmill and indoor track. So you've got a few running options. You can track a general cardio workout, cycling, again, indoor and outdoor, rowing, indoor and outdoor, walking, strength workout, yoga, Pilates, elliptical trainers, stair stepper, and swimming. It also allows you to take any of these existing sports, copy them and customize them to a sport that isn't on the list. I, for instance, have taken one of the cardio workouts and made an input for badminton. So what do I like about the watch? Number one, the design. The design in my opinion is really nice. It has a chunky rugged feeling without being too big on my wrists. The buttons have a tactile satisfying click and they're laid out in a logical fashion. The 245 comes in three colors, black, white and aqua. There are no prizes for guessing, this is the black one. If you go for the non-music variant, you get a choice of two colors, Merlot, which is a kind of purple, and grey, which is just lighter 
than the black. Garmin also sell a bunch of alternative straps in loads of different colors and a few different materials. You can get leather ones, more silicon ones, not to mention any third party ones that will fit a standard 20 millimeter band. The overall size of the watch is 42.3 millimeters in diameter and 12.2 millimeters thick. This for me is a perfect size. Any bigger, it would be too big for my small wrist. Any smaller, and I think the display would become too cramped. Number two, GPS accuracy. The GPS accuracy of the 245, simply put, is the best I've ever used in this type of device. Number three, the charging connection. Like most smartwatches and fitness trackers, the charging connection is proprietary. Although I'm pretty sure it's the same across the majority of the Garmin devices, at least that you can currently buy. What I like about it is that it's a physical connection. It clicks in securely, so there's no chance that I'm gonna knock it out while it's charging and wake up in the morning to a completely dead watch battery. I've had this with pretty much all other magnetic chargers that I've had in the past for previous watches and trackers that I've used. Number four, the interface. The interface is simple to use with dedicated buttons for navigation and for starting a workout, as well as long press shortcuts for secondary menus and features. Having a dedicated workout button is brilliant. I have mine set up for two sports. I have running and badminton. That means at any one time, I'm a maximum of four clicks away from starting the activity. Number five, no touchscreen. The lack of a touchscreen I actually find to be a big benefit, particularly when it comes to using the watch during a workout. Having a dedicated button interface means that when you've got sweaty fingers, you can still navigate the watch nice and easily without any unintended touches or menu selections. In some cases, it gives you the ability to navigate the watch without even looking. And no, I don't think voice control is a viable option. I've tried to use Siri to increase the volume on the music whilst running and it is impossible. Not to mention shouting turn up the volume whilst running down the street does draw some interesting reactions. A touchscreen interface on a screen this size can be a little bit fiddly. So using one mid run is almost impossible. Number six, battery life. So far with my mixed use, I'm seeing about five days of battery life. But this does depend on how much I run in a given week. The biggest battery drain is on a long run whilst using GPS and GLONASS and also listening to music. If I'm running low on battery before I'm about to go for a run, I plug it in for five or 10 minutes, top up the battery and it is usually good to go. Number seven, music playback. The interface for music playback is simple and it's perfect when you're running. I run using AirPods, and whilst I love them, my only criticism is that you have no physical control to change the volume. So using them with the watch while running solves that problem. You have physical up and down buttons for the volume, thumbs up. The interface also allows you to skip forward and back, play and pause, as well as loop and shuffle the tracks stored on the watch. If you are using AirPods, you can even pause the track using the touch sensors on the side of the AirPods and it will pause the watch. Both AirPods will do the same thing in this instance, you won't get the split functionality of left and right. And if you pull out one of the AirPods, it's not gonna pause. So you lose that functionality, but it's pretty useful to be able to pause the track using the tap of the ear rather than having to go into the music controls for the watch, particularly when you're ending a run. Number eight. Nike Run Club integration. Time for a history lesson. I've been using the Nike running app in one form or another since 2009. In those days, it was called Nike Plus and you had a sensor which went in the sole of your shoe. This relayed the data back to a native application on either an iPod or in my case, an iPhone 3GS. In 2010, Nike released the Nike Plus GPS app in the App Store. This meant you no longer needed the sensor in your shoe and you could also track your running via GPS using the GPS chip in the phone. The original tracker just did distance based on steps. There was no GPS tracking at all. Suffice it to say, I've been using this product in one form or another for over a decade. And whilst I have tried other apps and other trackers, I have always tried to maintain data in the Nike app. Enter 
Garmin Connect. Garmin Connect allows all of the data your 245 or indeed any other Garmin watch collects to be pushed automatically to the Nike Run Club app. As each of your runs are synced from the watch to Garmin Connect, it simultaneously pushes them to the Nike Run Club app, where they appear exactly as they would as if you'd logged it in the app itself. The only difference being, those runs will have a small Garmin badge in the bottom right hand corner, so you know that that's where it was tracked. But that's okay. This means I can continue to store my runs in the Nike Run Club app, I can compete in challenges and I can still have races with my friends. And if I ever decide to ditch the Garmin and get an Apple Watch say, then I'm going to be able to continue where I left off. I should say the Garmin Connect app is brilliant and it actually gives you a much more in-depth data set to look at. It has actually become my primary source of information when I'm looking at my stats. Garmin Connect can also push data to a number of other services if you have your own particular flavour of tracking. If you'd like a more in-depth review of the Garmin Connect app, just let me know down in the comments and I can put one together. Number nine, customization. You can customize the watch face by choosing one of the pre-installed watch faces. You can then customize the layout, the data set, the background color, the accent color, not to mention that you can download one of thousands of watch faces from the Connect IQ store. Customization of the workout screens allows you to choose what data sets you see and where, how many pages there are, and how many metrics are displayed at any one time. You can customize which sports you see in the workout start menu. As I mentioned before, I only have two. Those are the two sports which I most frequently carry out. And you can also customize what functions appear in the shortcuts menu, which can be accessed via a long press of the like button. In addition to the apps pre-installed on the watch, there are also thousands available on the Connect IQ store. Although personally, I haven't felt the need to download any of these aside from the music provider apps to use the music function. Number 10, smartwatch features. Smartwatch features are limited and honestly, this suits me down to the ground. I tend to limit the number of notifications I get anyway so that they're not constantly distracting me. On iOS, you are limited to push notifications and you're gonna get the same ones that you get on your iPhone. There's no further preferences to allow this on the watch and not on the phone. Whatever you decide you're gonna have on your phone, that's what's gonna get pushed to your watch. You can also answer and end calls as well as control music playback on your iPhone. On the Android side, you also have the additional benefit of being able to reply to some messages with predetermined responses. So there isn't full reply functionality, but you can have some pre-selected messages that's, you know, sorry I'm running late, or I can't answer the phone right now. Both operating systems limit the number of lines you can read of say a message or an email. I don't know what it's limited to, but if the message is too long, at a certain point it just goes to three dots and you need to pick it up on your phone. Whilst there is lots to like about the Garmin 245 Music, it is by no means perfect. So here are the things that I don't like. Number one, GPS accuracy when it goes wrong. On some occasions, not super often, it will be a little off. Running the same route can very occasionally produce a map with a fairly inaccurate route. Number two, GPS lock on time in some situations. GPS connections vary on most devices. But on some infrequent occasions, the 245 will take an age to establish a connection. And in some circumstances, I've been forced to restart the watch altogether and begin the sequence again. There is nothing more frustrating than standing outside your house, ready to run, waiting for a GPS connection that never comes. Number three, the length of the charging cable. Having praised the charging connection earlier, I must say, the length of the charging cable is ridiculous. It is so short. Most of the time, I have to have it plugged into the watch with the watch on the floor. It's not even long enough to reach up to my bedside table. It's just tiny. All I would like is one that's a little bit longer. Number four, music implementation. Being able to store music on the 245 is the only reason that you buy the music version over the regular 245 but the implementation is clunky at best. Let me explain. The music feature can sync with both Spotify Premium and Amazon Music. 
as well as you being able to transfer music directly from your computer onto the watch via a wired connection. Now, assuming you can get your 245 to establish a Wi-Fi connection, I have also had some difficulty with this in the past, you can browse your Spotify playlists and pick which ones you would like to download to the watch. This is the reason that you need a Spotify Premium account, it allows you to download music and play it offline. The problem is these downloads fail more often than not. Sometimes you're unable to establish the connection in the first place and other times they will get part way through the download and then fail for some unknown reason. And this isn't specific just to Spotify. I've had the same issues with Amazon Music. In fact, I haven't been able to get any Amazon Music on the watch whatsoever, which isn't a great loss. The Amazon Music library is much smaller than Spotify and Spotify is my main music streaming service of choice but in a desperate attempt to try and get something on the watch at one point, I tried Amazon Music, but that didn't work either. Looking on the support pages of the Garmin website, it seems this may be something of a Wi-Fi issue rather than anything else. And having read multiple forum posts, it's clear that this isn't an issue with just me and there are several customers experiencing the same issues. Although there have been several bug fixes and updates to the watch since I've owned it, none of these have solved the problem for good. So fingers crossed that a future update will do so. Now let's assume that you've managed to get some music onto your Garmin. Everything's gonna run smoothly from here, right? Well, not quite. The first few times I used the watch, I had some small dropouts in sound. Every so often, it sounded like the music had skipped or missed. You know, like sometimes when you start a Netflix show, the first few minutes are a bit patchy until the stream catches up and then everything's fine. I'm pleased to say this problem was solved pretty quickly and I haven't had it again since. But it's happened so I'm just letting you know. There is however one other occasional hitch that I still get. Every so often the music will refuse to play. You can't skip forward or back or change the playlist or get anything to happen with the music app at all. It's as if that music app has crashed altogether and the result is you need to restart the watch again. Usually this solves the problem, but the restart process isn't particularly quick and again, if you're just about to do a workout, it's pretty frustrating. Pros and cons aside, what's the overall verdict? The Garmin Forerunner 245 Music is an excellent watch, assuming it works all the time. It is pretty reliable, but there are a few issues. If you can overlook those issues, I would highly recommend this watch. Yes, it has the occasional glitch, but I wouldn't let that put you off. Updates are frequent, and the majority of the time, the watch works as expected. If you're looking for a running watch that can act as your sole device, doing both tracking of your workouts and providing your entertainment whilst you do it, then the 245 Music is perfect. If you're someone that's gonna run with their phone or iPod anyway, then you might wanna save a bit of cash and get the mostly identical non-music variant. If you like this video, then give me a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you would like more of this type of content, then hit that subscribe button. While you're down there, why not hit the bell? Otherwise, I will catch you in the next one.